Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. I'm a YouTuber, fencing instructor and antique sword collector. Um, and today we read that, as I warned at the end of 2017, the UK government has chosen to throw a lot of lawful innocent people under the bus in the name of fighting knife crime. Um, what they've done is they've announced that the new offensive weapons bill, amongst various other things which I won't go into here, will include a ban on posting um, knives, and they haven't defined what exactly that is, they are, um, but the posting of knives to private residential addresses. First of all, what does this mean? Well, quite frankly, until the bill is actually published, we don't know the details. We don't know what exactly are knives, what exactly are private residential addresses, although the latter is probably clearer than the former. Um, does it include fencing foils? Does it include secateurs? Does it include scissors? Does it include um, razors? We don't know. Um, does it include antiques? We don't know. Potentially at worst, what this could mean is that um, hundreds of businesses are put out of business. Uh, lots of people lose their livelihoods, uh, lots of hobbies and um, lawful activities, sports, crafts are disrupted. The fact is that there simply aren't high street shops for lots of specialised activities. Very few places, for example, have access to a local fencing shop. If you want to buy a, a fencing epee or um, foil, then it's delivered to your house. Simple as that. There isn't some local business. You can't go to the local corner shop and buy a fencing epee. Equally, even for some specialised crafts, you need certain types of, of knife and, and you, can't, you can't buy those in high street shops. There are also, of course, some very, very well-known knife makers who are making very high quality, very expensive knives. Not the sort of thing that your average gang member in Hackney is going to be buying off eBay. Um, or, or even, you can't even currently buy those kind of things off eBay, but they're not going to be going online and buying these sort of £400 pattern welded craft knives from the likes of, uh, of a famous knife maker. Um, but those knife makers now can't sell their knives through a website. So how do they sell them? Well, they're not going to travel around in a cart like we're in the 16th century selling them uh, out of the back. It is not a, it's not a plausible business model. We live in the internet age, business is done on the internet, and entire businesses have built themselves up to trade through the internet. If they can no longer do that, they can no longer function as businesses, and they're left with two options, close the business or emigrate. As I've said, there are many unknown things at the moment. We don't know what precisely will be prohibited from being delivered to a private address. Will it include fencing foils? We don't know. Will it include a reenactor's cavalry sabre for reenacting Napoleonic Wars, we don't know. Uh, we just simply don't know any of these things. We haven't been given this information yet. So businesses, collectors, hobbyists, sports people are all currently in limbo until this bill is published. But what we do know is that um, certain things that are very um, commonly used in crime are screwdrivers and kitchen knives. Now, theoretically, it might ban the postage of both of these to private addresses. But don't private addresses pretty much all contain these things already? What house doesn't contain a kitchen knife? What garage or house doesn't contain a screwdriver? And these are the things being used in crime by gang members in certain parts of inner city areas. Not fencing foils, not priceless antique swords. And these are the things that the government profess, they say, that they're trying to prevent people from getting hold of easily and stabbing each other with. But these are the very things that this new bill will not prevent people from getting hold of because they're everywhere. So potentially all the UK government has done is throw a whole range of people, thousands of people in the UK, under the bus in the name of fighting knife crime and they will achieve nothing. This will do nothing to reduce knife crime, and yet it will reduce, for example, the trade in priceless antique swords like this from about 1750, um, which has probably never ever done any harm to anyone, but nevertheless is part of a very lucrative 
antiques trade. And by limiting these very obscure objects which are not used in crime um, and which are, uh, have historical and cultural value and provide thousands and thousands of jobs from um, antique auction houses through to um, people who are forging knives, you know, very high quality pattern welded crafts knives, to uh, people um, running fencing clubs that provide a hub of exercise and cultural enrichment for a local community who can no longer easily access equipment that they need. What the government has done is it has taken all of those law-abiding people, thrown them under the bus in the name of fighting knife crime whilst not fighting knife crime. What more can I say? Well, there is something you can say. And underneath this um, video, there is an email address. And that email address is at the Home Office. Now, the Home Office of the government department in the UK that are responsible for drafting this bill and coming up with this whole idea. So what you can do is make the Home Office aware of what your thoughts about this matter are. I'm not going to put words into your mouth. I'm not going to tell you what to write. But very simply, it should be clear that what's happening here is politicking. Uh, it's a way of the government making it look like they are doing something to deal with a problem whilst not actually dealing with that problem, but instead throwing a bunch of law-abiding people under the bus in the name of looking like they're doing something. But you can um, make your own feelings on the matter um, heard by emailing the address underneath this video. Thank you for watching.